The North Carolina State Elections Board, which has been investigating possible election fraud in a U.S. House race there, has been dissolved. A three-judge panel sided with critics who have long held that the makeup of the nine-person board was unconstitutional. The ruling is not directly related to the election fraud investigation, but could complicate it. The board was scheduled to examine evidence in a January hearing that could pave the way for a redo election. Democrat Dan McCready appeared to lose to Republican Mark Harris by 905 votes in November. But the board did not certify the result. I want to bring in Nick Oxner. He's the chief investigative reporter with our Charlotte affiliate, WBTV. He joins us today from Atlanta. So, Nick, what does this mean for the election fraud investigation? Well, uh, it looks like the state elec uh, elections board, or its staff in many ways, uh, has put out a statement in the last couple hours saying that the investigation continues. Um, so... Practically, at least today, it looks like investigators are continuing to do their work. But frankly, that's the big question that has been on people's minds over the last 24 hours is the practical implications as we move past today or, or Monday. What are the candidates saying about the development? Yeah, well, we still have not heard anything from Dan McCready. That's the Democrat in the ninth District race who lost, or at least preliminarily appears to have lost by 905 votes. Uh, Mark Harris, though, the Republican who narrowly won uh, the November election, has made uh, several steps both last night and again today. Uh, Harris's campaign actually filed an emergency uh, motion, if you will, with the North Carolina State Board of Elections that existed up until noon today. This morning, they filed that motion asking for the board uh, that was in existence until noon, asking them to certify his election and his victory before it dissolved at noon. The board chairman, uh, Josh Malcolm, wrote, uh, responded very quickly and said they weren't going to do that. Um, and, and we understand from senior Republican sources told me last night that uh, if the board wasn't going to certify his election before it dissolved today, we expect to see them file some action in federal court later today, some sort of injunction trying to force the state to certify his victory. Nick, how did this all begin? Where did this partisan battle in the state start? And do you see some sort of end in sight to this? Well, uh, no, and the partisan battle really dates back almost a decade now to, to 2010 when Republicans took control of the General Assembly, both chambers for the first time since Reconstruction. But more recently, the state uh, of Republicans in the state House and Senate passed a bill in 2016 that reconstituted the way the State Board of Elections was made up um, and made a nine-member board that uh, had four Republicans, four Democrats, and one unaffiliated and so the, the governor, Roy Cooper, Democratic governor, Roy Cooper filed a lawsuit challenging the way that composition, that board was made up. And in October, a three-judge panel sided with the governor and said the way that board was made up was unconstitutional. Uh, they stayed that decision. They effectively delayed that decision in a number of orders four different times until today at noon. And just yesterday, they issued a new ruling saying they weren't going to delay that decision anymore because people had sought yet another uh, delay until after the State Board of Elections was done investigating the 9th Congressional District. Nick, do you have a sense of maybe how long this seat could go unfilled in the House? Well, uh, today's uh, developments certainly complicate that question a little bit. If we go on the same track record, assuming so, so today the governor has has said that uh, he's going to appoint a temporary board, a new permanent board can be appointed at the end of January because of a new bill. So let's assume that all moves on track and there's still going to be a January 11th hearing held by this temporary board. And that's a big assumption at this point, because we don't know. But assume even if that moves on, uh, they could order a new election. And if they order a new election, that won't be held until May, most likely. And so we're looking at months, um, potentially, before anything, any new, uh, any candidate uh, could take that seat. Now, there's also the possibility that they could have a hearing on January 11th or later, and they could vote to certify the results ultimately, uh, which they've refused to do heretofore. And so if that were the case, the Mark Harris could be seated uh, pretty, pretty quickly, almost immediately. But we're looking anywhere from a couple more weeks all the way up through several months. Nick Oxner with our Charlotte affiliate WBTV. Nick, thank you so much. Thank you.